And my numero uno, baby, I, I, I call it baby numero uno, let's see. It's uh, my Les Paul that I bought new in 1980. Oop, there goes my sunglasses, who cares? There's no sun anyway, so let me check. So I bought this guitar new in 1980 when it just came out. Wow. And the funny thing is it's still um, the, the prettiest uh, heritage that I've encountered. At the time I thought every, every guitar is going to have a top like this. Yeah. But I had, this is still the prettiest one. It's really faded because it used to be dark brown sunburst. Wow, of. really? And uh, you know, I, I kind of, it's really popular to relic guitars now. Yeah. But this is done by my own blood, sweat and tears. And it looks like, uh, well, it has been around for 44 years, you know. So I've, I've seen a lot, a lot of gigs, a lot of tours, right? I, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, you know, I was only two when I bought it. It's 40, 40, 40 Part of the family old. at this point. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, with all the reissues coming out from Gibson, I think Cesar should maybe take a look. Can you imagine that? If we they issued like a Adrian Vandenberg Les Paul signature? You know what I did at Murphy the time? Lab? To, what I did at the time to, to make it a little different uh, from like a uh, pickguard somewhere, I, I, I hand saw this out. I thought it looks different than another. No but kidding. That's why I always uh, recognize it. So is it, if there's ever going to be like a signature, signature one, this is the main difference. That's the main difference, is a truss rod cover. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. And I like that. And I come up with the top like this, because uh, this top is amazing. Yeah, you don't you don't see them like that anymore, no. you know? And just the craze for Les Pauls in general, vintage, have gone through the roof. I mean, Man. had we all known, I found a clip of Slash talking about going guitar shopping and buying like a 59 for, I think it was 18 grand, something like that at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, look at that! Where that went, like over five. That's a great. That's a good. That's a good profit right. there. I, I got a fifty-eight. Um, really? And I, I'm gonna get rid of it because it's too paranoid. You know, it's so it sits in a vault somewhere. I think that's that's not, that's not what a guitar is for. You know. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna say goodbye to it. Uh, I, I have this one sounds just as good. Wow. Okay. Because this one has been played for forty-three years. You know. All right. So um, yeah, uh, but it's it it got too paranoid. You know, it became like a. An investment object for a lot of people. You yeah, know, people from Japan and from China who buy one and they put it in a vault and they go. Uh, the only guy I think that actually plays them supposedly is Joe Bonamassa. They'll take them on the road and actually play them. Yeah, you know, he, interview well, he's, got, he's only got about three hundred uh, ones. That guy, man. I know. <laughs> he's got a, a, a limited supply yeah, of does, vintage yeah. Gibsons coming in all the time. Yeah. If, if one's <laughs> out of tune, he throws it away, you know, and then he grabs another one. And all the amps too. He's using all vintage amps. He does, man. I, I would be paranoid of those just dying out on the yeah. stage. They're all kept really well. He knows. He knows how to do it right. So.